So in this final lecture on photoelectrochemical design, electrocatalyst design using DFT, uh, DFT simulation, we will go through certain, a particular case study also, okay? So in the some previous lectures, how did we go about designing um, electrocatalyst? Our advantage uh, in terms of capturing the energetics of electrocatalytic processes rely on what is called the computational standard hydrogen electron, right? We, because this is the equilibrium that is there in uh, standard hydrogen electrode, we were able to relate the chemical potential of proton plus the chemical potential of electron to this chemical potential. Why did we do that? Because computing these things are very difficult in DFT, okay? This is in solution, this is in the electrode and so on, but this is a simple calculation, okay? Uh, in most of the processes, what you have is, uh, this doesn't appear, but this appears together, okay? Because they appear together, uh, these two can be related to this. So in, 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 in addition, okay, this is, see, the standard hydrogen electrode is defined at some specific uh, pH and that's what the, that's how you define the zero uh, of the electrochemical potential series, electrochemical series, right? You see it from you've seen this from high school, okay? Uh, uh, it, but if you want to operate at different pH, uh, we can uh, relate uh, the change in chemical potential of proton is related to changes in pH, okay? Away from the standard hydrogen electrode. Likewise, more importantly, the change in electron energy, free energy of the electron is related from basic uh, electrochemistry, right? The delta G uh, of electron is given by E times U, right? Uh, minus E times, this is a charge times U. Okay, this is the important step. So what did we do in uh, electrocatalyst design? We tried to look at the potential energy surface as we uh, scanned U and estimated the activation barrier and talked about uh, potentials at which you would have maximum rates uh, and the over potential associated with the electrocatalyst. All right, so how do we uh, transfer this strategy to photoelectrochemistry? So the main question here is, what is the U for relevant to photoelectrochemical system? Okay, so for that, you have to look at what is happening in a photoelectrochemical system, right? So, uh, so what is happening? Uh, don't look at this. Okay, first let's look at this. Okay, so uh, there is uh, uh, electron hole pair is created, and the hole uh, gets transferred to the some species. Okay, water actually here in this case in the electrolyte. Uh, hole transfer from the electrode semiconductor electrode to the electrolyte is equivalent to electron transfer from water to the hole. So the question is. Uh, okay, in addition to this, in some previous lecture, we uh, we looked at the uh, the energy, energetics of uh, valence band positions and uh, energy of the conduction, uh, conduction band positions uh, with respect to vacuum energy levels. This is what uh, solid state physicists, electrical engineers and physicists uh, refer to. And there is an equivalent of uh, how the electrochemist referred to it, right? So this is the, for example, if you take Gali marcinite, uh, the conduction band is present at this uh, U or this U and the valence band is present at this U. Okay, once this mapping has been done, we know that the electron that gets transferred goes to this uh, valence band, okay? So the U that is relevant, we know the valence band position of different semiconductors uh, with respect to standard hydrogen electrode, right? So normal hydrogen, NHE means normal hydrogen electrode. Uh, There's a small difference between standard hydrogen electrode and NHE, okay? So that's, that's marginal, we don't worry about that, okay? Uh, so this is, we know the different uh, levels of conduction band positions uh, of different semiconductor, well span positions of different semiconductor against this U, right? So the the U relevant to photoelectrochemical uh, electrochemical uh, catalyst, a photoelectrochemical um, 
systems is UVB. VB refers to valence band positions. Okay, so you are talking about the energetics at a particular at a fixed UVB. Okay, that's what you are trying to do. All right. So how do you go about this a case study which we had done long time ago? Uh, Fe two O three. Okay, so we try to look at uh, water splitting on Fe two O three. Why is this important? Fe2O3 is rust, right? This is a very inexpensive material and it has a band gap of 2.2, okay? So if you remember the black body spectrum of the sun, I said that uh, semiconductors, the, the peak is somewhere around two. Uh, the, if you have a semiconductor which can absorb solar energy at, at, at around that, um, if it has a band gap of around uh, 2 to, to 2.2, 2, that's very advantageous. It can uh, absorb lots of solar energy. If you look at uh, rust, okay, which is uh, what is Fe2O3, you, it's very dark, right? It's dark brown. Whenever something is very dark, that means what? That it can absorb a lot of sunlight, right? Uh, so that's why it's dark, right? Uh, uh, if it is, it absorbs a lot, it is very black. Uh, but uh, Fe2O3 is fairly dark, dark brown, right? So it's just a good semiconductor and it should have band uh, 1.23 is a minimum potential plus O potential. So anything that has a band gap of above 1.6, 1.7 is good for photoelectrochemistry. Okay, so Fe2O3 is a, a good material uh, for exploring uh, photoelectrochemistry. So we try to look at uh, the energetics of a water splitting in that system. So density functional theory, don't worry about this, this uh, periodic pseudo potential plane wave analysis. Okay, there's a way we, we talked about all these things in some previous lectures, but that analysis was uh, water splitting, photoelectrochemical water splitting on Fe2O3 was analyzed. So why do we do it? As I just said, Fe2O3 has a lesser band gap compared to two very da uh, prominent uh, semiconductors, TuO2 as 3.2, tungsten oxide as, as 2.6, okay. So these are inexpensive again, but because they have high band gap, the extent to which they can absorb solar energy is limited. So we wanted to look at uh, this particular uh, thing. So and we want to look up some, come up with some prediction that can be tested against experiment. So how do you go about doing this simulation? So there are different surface terminations. Okay, so this is one thing that is very complex. See, when whenever you are trying to study. Um, an interface that exists between solid and water, okay, on, on an aqueous medium, the interface is very complex, okay. So, see, uh, what, see, if you look at a heterogeneous catalyst, the interface is between solid surface and gas phase, okay. So, the interface is not that chemically complex, structurally complex, okay, because there is chemical, a lot of structure on one side, on the solid side, but there's not structure on the gas side. But when you have uh, a, a solid, in this case, uh, the solid is a semiconductor and water interface, the structure the, the, it can be very complex. There are different possibilities for the surface structure. Okay, so we want to look at what kind of uh, surface termination exists. Okay, there are many terminations that are possible. So that's what we were trying to look up. Okay, so this is uh, one termination, B is this kind of termination and so on. Okay, so that's what we tried to look up. And then, then the next question we wanted to ask is the stability of different the surfaces are at different potential okay so how do we go about uh, looking at this okay so for example if i take up uh, this particular termination surface termination that can dissociate okay into this surface termination and give three protons and three electrons right so this Chemical species will be dependent upon the pH, okay? The, the free energy of this will depend upon the pH here. And the free energy of this can is controlled by the potential. So if you are at high potential, high positive potential, high anodic potential, this is going to be stabilized, okay? So if I see, if I look at this particular species, uh, this is independent of the stability of this is independent of uh, pH and uh, 
pH, I mean, in a sense that this energy of this particular system is not affected by pH and um, electro, uh, potential, okay? But its tendency to transform into this particular thing is related to pH and the potential you are operating. Okay, so beyond a particular potential, this becomes more stable. Okay, this is no longer the stable uh, surface. So this point, okay, this line indicates the stability of this. This indicates the stability of this entire thing. Okay, so as at some point, okay, so if you are at low anodic potential, this has this particular species has lesser energy compared to this red curve. Okay, that is the uh, stability of. Uh, this 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 entire thing okay so but beyond a particular species this this uh, component becomes more stable compared to this so this will transform into this particular species likewise if you have some other uh, thing okay so if you have this particular termination this termination can also uh, disproportionate uh, and this uh, stability can be affect, influenced by uh, uh, if you have more anodic potential, this becomes more stable. Therefore, these, uh, so until a particular point, this is stable, but beyond a particular point, uh, this becomes more stable. Again, uh, you can have a few other terminations and uh, uh, for example, this can further get transformed into this termination. Okay, it can give off this protons and electron and form this termination. Okay, so that these kinds of things can be analyzed. Okay, this is what is called surface Pope diagram. Okay, can be incorporated okay, into this analysis. And you can ask computationally, you can try to resolve this question of which uh, is the dominant. Uh, uh, surface termination. Once you have the surface termination, you can study, right? What is the, uh, the oxygen formation reaction uh, in this thing? We've already seen these uh, things. First, uh, you form an oxygen adatum, then this species, then hydroxyl, and uh, uh, you can capture the energetics of this. This is very similar to what we did for ORR and OER, okay? But only difference is what there in ORR and OER, we try to look at the energetics at variety of electrochemical potential, okay, the electrode potentials. But here, we say that the photoelectrochemical system is at a particular potential, right? So you look at the energetics of, so what do you do? So you, on this, you take this termination and then try, try to study water dissociation. You look at this pathway, okay? Uh, oxygen evolution pathway in a particular termination, right? Likewise, you can analyze a different termination. And what is the question we are interested in asking? We are interested in asking in which termination uh, the rates will be highest, okay? So if you look at, if we compare this termination and this termination, you will anticipate there's an activation barrier here, okay? So if I look at this termination, there's an activation barrier here. But along this termination, none of this thing does seem to have a thermodynamic barrier, okay? So that you would anticipate the activation barrier is going to be less in this termination, okay? So that's the kind of question you try to uh, ask in using the density fractional theory simulation. Why do I call it partial potential energy surface? We are only computing the steps that involve electron coupled electron and proton transfer okay always these things have coupled electron and proton transfer you can also have actually chemical steps okay that are possible okay uh, that that is so in between this not every step needs to have uh, only uh, coupled electron and uh, proton. So there can be uh, non-electrochemical steps. We can also uh, sort of calculate, okay, that's just like heterogeneous catalyst, okay? Uh, uh, that can also be computed uh, using these uh, things, okay? For example, uh, what are we trying to say here, okay? So this, the chemical step is, in, in this uh, thing, the H2O is bound to an active site. Then you can ask the question, is to what is the desorption energy of H2O from the uh, binding site? That, that, that doesn't involve any electron or proton transfer. That is just a chemical step, okay? So you can likewise ask these questions on, uh, so for example, this is uh, O2 that is bound to uh, the active site. You can also ask what is the, uh, energy required for oxygen desorption and so on, okay? Uh, such kind of questions can be asked. 
all right so uh, this, this these steps do not uh, you can do more comp with chemical steps also you can calculate the potential energy surface so you can ask the question what makes okay uh, fe2o3 a good oxygen evolution catalyst so what aspects okay so if first uh, towards answering this question we can first ask what kind of surface termination is stable under photoelectrochemical uh, condition then you ask the question uh, in which termination o2 is uh, spontaneous okay so we we saw that from the potential energy surface along one uh, some termination it becomes uh, spontaneous and then uh, along those termination oxygen evolution using photoelectrochemical systems is will be favorable <laughs> So in all these things, what is important is that's a, a study we made long time ago. But uh, this is an unsolved problem. Okay, this is enough. In fact, uh, most one of the most important lots of work is being attempted in this area. So how are people trying to research? Okay, so in the the purpose of all these lectures is not only tell you the methods okay the computation methods that are used uh, for analyzing these kinds of system but we also want to understand what is the frontiers of research themes in this uh, thing right so uh, we have written some uh, article we work a lot in this area uh, so here manipulating chemical coordination is very critical okay uh, so if you can control bulk coordination you can control uh, band gaps okay this is important in solar cells also uh, important in semiconductor photoelectrochemistry. Uh, you can also control uh, ion intercalation that is important in batteries, for example, and uh, lithium ion batteries. Uh, in charging, diffusion is important, lithium ion diffusion is important. All these things depend upon bulk coordination. Surface, surface structure controls strengths in electrocatalysis, important OER, ORR, and uh, PEC. Band alignments, okay, this is something which I have not talked about. Uh, this is a very, in fact, this is a very important problem, okay, this is more complex, okay. Uh, that is, when as soon as you create an electron hole pair by absorbing a proton, how do you separate electron hole pair? This is important. In a PN junction solar cell, the PN junction sets up an electric field, okay, which makes the electron move in the opposite direction compared to hole movement, okay. But in a semiconductor, it, this uh, electric field is, uh, there is some electric field using the semiconductor electrolyte interface. We talked about this in a previous lecture. Uh, this is a complex problem, okay? So people are trying to understand this in greater detail. And if you can solve this, many things will improve, okay? So some of the approaches we have tried to take is, again, motivated from solar cells, okay? Supposing I have two semiconductors, okay? So this has a particular band gap, this has a different band gap, uh, but more importantly, the valence band are staggered in this manner. The conduction band is staggered in this manner, okay? This itself is like a PN junction. If you see, if it's staggered in the following manner, if you have, say, what is the advantage? There are two advantages. First, these have two different band gaps. So different parts of the solar spectrum can be absorbed by different material, okay? So usually the outside one has larger band gap. Um, so whatever light that has not been absorbed by this semiconductor can be absorbed by this semiconductor. In addition to that, if a hole is created here, that will have a thermodynamic driving force, right? The hole will always move up the band energy diagram, okay? The hole will transfer, get transferred in this manner. And then the electron will always go down the uh, potential band energy diagram, right? So the hole will get transferred here. If you align two sets of semiconductors, uh, you can, there's a, the natural driving force for the hole to get transferred and go to the electrolyte side and the electron will get transferred and go across the wire to this electrode. Okay, so this is an approach. Okay, this is again motivated from semiconductor physics. Uh, and then, so you call this native structure and non-native structure. We don't want to go into this. Okay, this is a, a particular way of chemical controlling the chemical structure this is a different crystal structure different crystal structure hopefully this crystal structure has this kind of band uh, band edges band gap and this native film has this kind of band edges band gap okay so you can also this is thin films you can also make 
పార్టికల్ స్ట్రక్చర్ దిస్ లైక్ బై కంపార్ట్మెంటల్ క్వాంటమ్ డాట్ ఒక జేనస్ స్ట్రక్చర్ ఓకే సో యూ కెన్ ఆల్సో హ్యావ్ దిస్ కైండ్ ఆఫ్ స్ట్రక్చర్ వీ హెవ్ వర్క్ అట్ ఆన్ దిస్ ఓ ద లాస్ట్ ఎయిట్ మోర్ దెన్ ఎయిట్ ఇయర్స్ టెన్ ఇయర్స్ వీ హెవ్ వర్క్ అ లాట్ ఆన్ సిన్సిస్ design modeling using quantum chemical simulations uh, on uh, these kinds of material okay so lots of uh, work has been published on all these things on solar energy driven uh, hydrogen evolution okay for example these are what i told mentioned here this kind of a system okay so we have anatase uh, uh, a particular form of tao2 uh, this is rutile form of tao2 the band edges are aligned in a particular way which facilitates electron hole transfer okay and there you put a gold particle because it's a plasmonic okay the plasmons can get generated and can transfer electrons uh, and holes in a particular way okay? this kind of work has been done and uh, still going on okay world over we also do a lot of work and this uh, work which uh, we did recently it got lots of uh, good uh, reviews and so on so here again this is all motivated by uh, semiconductor so solar cell community okay uh, so this is what is called a type 2 band arrangement okay if you, you have two semiconductors uh, you arrange the band edges in a particular way so that the hole gets transferred in one way and the electron gets transferred in the opposite manner okay so one of the crucial thing we try to ask is if you have two such semiconductors how how would there be what kind of band alignment okay uh, what kind of alignment would be there when you form such a semiconductor okay alignment not only in terms of band edges would there be appropriate chemical coordination okay is the chemical coordination appropriate okay between see just putting these two uh, semiconductors uh, would form a good interface there can be lot of uh, broken bonds uh, this prevent this kind of hole transfer and electron transfer okay sometimes it's advantageous sometimes it's not advantageous okay so we try to look at uh, this kind of uh, uh, band alignments not only band alignments which should form co- so called coherent interface strained coherent interface and incoherent interface incoherent interface will have lot of uh, Uh, broken bonds okay so this is something which we did uh, recently and uh, all right so and we analyze lots of semiconductors okay some of these materials are good for solar cell applications photoelectrochemical application because they have type 2 heterostructure interface okay there's some some other thing called type 1 heterostructures these are used for for light emitting diode right so see led is opposite of solar cell what do you do in solar cell you shine light and you generate electron hole pair but in light emitting diode you combine an electron and hole and generate light okay so solid state lighting is sort of opposite of solar cell right so uh, uh, in in type 1 uh, heterostructures are relevant to uh, leds type 2 heterostructures are relevant to photo solar cells and as well as photoelectrochemical all these things were done using quantum chemical density functional theory simulations okay so the power uh, of dft is huge okay to design materials especially relevant to energy okay so we analyze lots of uh, materials okay so for example uh, this uh, a function of this uh, component and this component uh, we looked at different uh, such materials and we try to ask which will form a type 2 heterostructure which will form a type 1 heterostructures and which what will be the extent of strain, strain uh, in this and we made so lots of extensive study uh, very well received okay all right so just to conclude what all did we see so what is the take home in the series of lectures first i believe this solar hydrogen is one of the most important problems in uh, chemical science and engineering okay so if you can uh, generate hydrogen using renewable energy and a renewable feed okay i call this a renewable reductant because you can uh, use the so generated hydrogen uh, to reduce carbon monoxide carbon dioxide okay so the, you have a better control handle on um carbon dioxide global warming right once you form you can let's say you form methanol and methanol can be transferred to olefins and so on okay this is a very very important problem so one of the point of these lectures this class is that not only it should give you an idea of 
the tools that are uh, not only uh, learn some tools, but you should also know research areas that are dominant uh, in these um, uh, fields. Okay. And then it's a hard problem. Okay. It's not an easy problem. People have been working on it for 50 years. Okay. Uh, and it has to be solved. Right? Like you, it's like cancer, for example. Cancer is a hard problem. Okay. Uh, you can't give up because it has to be solved. Like with this, is a hard problem. Uh, a lot of effort has to be put into uh, addressing these issues. What makes it a hard problem? How, how are you going to solve it? Okay. So you, you want to generate. Uh, appropriate electrochemical potential for promoting electron transfer and hole transfer in a particular way. And how do you do it? Okay, you, you do it by modulating materials. Okay, uh, you have to control optical absorption, you want to control electron hole separation, and you want to control surface electrochemistry. Okay, uh, in my opinion, this is a harder problem uh, of the three. And quantum chemical density function theory simulation is going to help you in uh, doing this. Uh, having said that, you have to work closely along with experiments. We try to do both in our labs, okay? So not only we do a lot of analysis uh, before we do the experiment, after doing the analysis experiments also, we try to analyze experimental results using quantum chemical density functional theory. All right, uh, with this, I will stop.